This conference will now be recorded. Has decoded brain maps of human color perception, revealing how the brain organizes and groups colors in the environment. Genetics, age, and other factors determine how we perceive color. This means each of us has a unique view on everything we see. My perspective is that the sun is yellow because that is what I see. Although if you Google the picture of the sun from a telescope, perhaps you would see orange. However, if you went outside and looked directly into the sun, you may not see yellow or orange. In fact, you'd start to see what scientists call blinding light, which causes an overstimulation of the photoreceptors in your retina and can lead to blurred vision, headaches, and permanent damage to your eyes, and therefore your perspective. So please do your best to refrain from staring directly at the sun. How can understanding the meaning of perspective help us improve? As the old saying goes, walk a mile in someone else's shoes. The saying encourages empathy and understanding by suggesting that before leaping, leaping to judgment or criticism, to try and understand the other person's perspective. In the reading earlier, I took a couple of verses at the beginning of Romans 12. The Apostle Paul wrote, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In the second verse, something that really resonates with me is the renewal of your mind. This is not something that we do once, for example, at our baptism. This renewal is one that we can achieve in a moment of quiet prayer as often as we need or feel necessary. A renewed mind is important as it can allow you to have a fresh perspective. I believe this to be one of the fundamentals to understanding the meaning of a perspective. If you do not re renew your mind, you risk being stuck in one place. This is why is it important to pause and reflect. It is also wise to listen to other people's perspectives, to gather knowledge, develop personally, and connect with others. An example I liked from the Old Testament comes from the book of Isaiah. In chapter 55, verses 8 to 9, we read, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. In the literal sense, God distinguishes, distinguishes himself from us by declaring that he is indeed a higher power, and there are things he knows that we simply cannot comprehend. Although I believe there is more to learn from this quote, in particular, verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Your perspective is unique to you. No two individuals can have the same identical perspective. It seems to me that the powerful people in the world today insist on pushing two opposing perspectives and using the media to create divide between them. Everywhere you look, there are two sides. The United States is probably the most obvious example with their upcoming election. But even here in New Zealand, it's hard to go through a work week without someone talking about national or labor. Even in the United Kingdom, they're in turmoil with the growing tension between the English population and the growing presence of Islamic immigrants. Now, social media plays a huge role in the direction that society is heading, reaching more people than ever possible before. Spreading misinformation and hate towards the other side is something we're seeing more and more. And this tarnishes how people perceive those that are different to themselves. These are unprecedented times that we're entering, with the rapid development of technology and communication. 
and with all that is happening, it can be invasive, very invasive on our lives. And we need to remember in this time where our foundation is built upon. The world is ever changing, often for the worse. Fortunately, the word of God never changes. It remains consistent. And as Christians, we know to follow Jesus and not the world. We perceive the world in a different manner, which most people these days would call traditional or conservative. But you don't have to go far back in time to where our perspective was considered to be normal. Whilst you and I may disagree on one thing or another, there is at least one thing everyone here can agree on, that Christ Jesus, the Son of God, was raised from the dead. And what about non-believers? What might their perspective be on Christians? An example I've come across is that Christians are very judgmental. This comes from both believers or non-believers and people who have walked away from faith. Now, why might this be? As Christians, we are called to follow in the ways of Jesus. And the rest of the world generally no longer practices this. It can be perceived as judgmental to point out when we see somebody acting in a manner that is not Christ-like. By identifying ourselves as Christian, we are representing Christ in all that we do. It is not only our responsibility to act righteously, but to inspire and encourage others to do also. At the beginning of Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will, not, or you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Considering the direction in which society is headed, now more than ever, we need to call people into faith with Christ and teach them his ways, especially the lost sheep who have wandered from the herd. The beautiful thing about perspectives is that they can be changed for the better. Now, I'd like to conclude with a moment of personal reflection, some questions for us to think about as we consider our own personal development and how we may improve. How often do I renew my mind, allowing me to form fresh perspectives? Do I show what it means to be Christian? in a positive way? Am I too judgmental of others? When was the last time I reached out to that lost sheep? Thank you for your words, George. You've left us with some very thought-provoking questions. So that brings us now to the memorial meal. We remember our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, that we might have forgiveness. So before we take of the bread, I will invite our brother David to please give thanks for the bread. Our great, <clears throat> excuse me, our great and eternal Heavenly Father, we approach unto you now through the name of your beloved Son. 
And we thank you so much, Father, for the opportunity that we have this morning to come together around the table of the Lord and to remember, to remember the price that was paid for our redemption. And we've been reminded this morning, Father, in the words of exhortation about our perspective that we would follow the example of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and our way of life. And so, Father, we, we thank you that you have uh, given, him, uh, 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 given us him as a sacrifice for sin. And we thank you that you have worked together with your Son to establish the uh, um, the new covenant that we now live in, and that, and, and, and that indeed, Father, we are so grateful that you have done this for us. And so, Father, as we share this bread before us, which is the symbol of his body, we do pray indeed, Father, that we might think about um, the true perspective of our lives, that indeed, Father, we would follow his example always and to endeavour um, always to be, as it were, Christ's to each other and to um, acknowledge, Father, that you are indeed the great and, and mighty God who has plans um, uh, um, for us in the future and we do know that indeed, Father, that that, that means the return of your Son to the earth. And so, Father, with these um, wonderful perspectives in our minds, we thank you so much and pray that you will hear our prayer and receive our thanksgiving for this bread which we now share. In Jesus' name, Amen. And once he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, uh, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me.